One of the key things to understand when you're learning a new programming language is how to handle a collection of items. In real life applications, you're always needed to write programs that handle list of items. Whether it's a YouTube search that gives you a list of videos to watch from, or even if it is a classroom management system where you have to handle a list of student objects. Python has four built-in data types for handling collections of items. Python list, Python tuples, Python sets, Python dictionaries. In this video, we're going to look at Python list. If you've started learning Python, you would have already noticed how Python tends to simplify things in terms of code. But when it comes to Python list, it can be a bit intimidating to look at the code written by others. Watch this video till the end and you'll probably not have to watch another Python list video again. First thing to understand is what are Python lists? Python list is a bunch of items. In Python, you can create a list by defining a variable and assigning it to a square bracket, which contains comma separated items. Here, I have defined a list of employees containing three employee names, David, Lisa, and Anne. Let's try to print the type of this object using Python's type function. We will be getting an output class equals list, which means Python recognizes this variable as a type of list. Before we proceed, it's good to understand a couple of properties of Python list. Choosing when to use Python list should be based on these properties. Python list is a basic sequence type, which means you'll be able to use functions like len to find the length of the list object, and you can also use functions like min and max. Python lists are mutable, which means it is possible to add, remove, or update items in a list. We will be seeing how to do that later on. Python lists are ordered, which means order of the input of the list object is maintained when we access them. Python lists are dynamic, which means that lists don't have a fixed size and it can grow if you keep adding elements to your list. Python lists can contain duplicates. So if you want to add another David into this list, which already has a David, it is completely fine. Python lists are heterogeneous, which means you can add values of different data types into a Python list and it still wouldn't complain. So if I add five, which is a numeric integer type to our employees list, which only contained strings up until now, and let's print it and we can see that it is not showing any errors. But let's go ahead and delete this because in real life applications, you would rarely need a heterogeneous data type. So considering these properties, you will need to make sure that Python lists are used in the right place. Let's say if you want to define a list of items that should not be changed after creation. In this case, Python lists are probably not your best option. Maybe you will need to look into something like Python tuple instead. Next, let's have a look at how we can access elements from a Python list. First is indexing. You can use zero based indexing to fetch elements of a list. For example, if you wanted to get the first elements from this employees list, we would write print employees of zero. If we wanted the second element, we would write print employees of one. One cool thing for sequences in Python is that we can use negative indexing, which is counting indices from the last index. Suppose we wanted to print the last element. Normally we would start by getting the length of the list and then we will print employees of len of employees minus one. With negative indexing, we can simply write employees of minus one, which has the same effect. Next is slicing. If we wanted to extract a sub list from an existing Python list, we can use a method called slicing. This can be a bit intimidating to look at, but it's really easy to understand. Just like indexing, here we'll use the same square brackets, but this time we'll add a colon and another index. This represents that we are slicing from index zero to index two. Notice that I said two instead of three because index written after the colon is excluded from the list. So zero colon three means slice from zeroth index to the second index. Two colon four means slice from the second index to third index. We could make slicing even better by removing the number on either side of the colon. Let's add a few more elements to the employees list. Now let's write employees two colon. Here I have not given the ending index of the slice. In this case, Python will slice to the end of the list and we'll get the following result. Similarly, you can write employees of colon four and Python will slice from the beginning of the list to the third index. Remember again that the fourth index is excluded from the slice. And if you really like to chew on light bulbs, you can even slice using negative indexing. 
Next is checking if an item exists in a Python list. To do that, we can simply use the in keyword. Simply writing item in list will return a boolean value true or false, which means that it can be checked using a Python's if condition. For example, let's check if Lisa is in our employees list. Lisa in employees and let's print that and we get true. Now let's print Matt in employees and we get false. Similarly, if you are trying to check if an item is not existing in the list, we can use the not in keywords. Let's check if Matt is not in employees and we get true. And if we check with an existing employee, for example, Lisa not in employees, we get false because Lisa exists in our Python employees list. Next up, we have sequence operations for list. Since Python list is a sequence type, it supports certain operations that all sequences have like len, which will give you the length of the list. Let's define a list of integers called scores and type len of scores. And we can see the result as the length. Similarly, we can write max of scores to get the highest score and min of scores to get the lowest score. There's a function index to get the first occurrence of a value in the list. If you write scores.index of 55, we get two, which is the first index where we find 55. If we provide a value that is not found, we get an error saying value error, value which is 90 in this case is not in the list. We can count the number of occurrences of a number using the count function, scores.count of 45 and we get two as there are two scores of 45 in our list. Since lists are iterable objects, we can iterate over a list using for loops. For example, if we write four score in scores, we can handle each item as score inside the for loop. In this case, let's just try to print the element and we can see our result in the console. Next, let's take a look at list methods. First is the append method, which is used for appending a new item to the end of the list. Say we want to add a new employee Matt to our list. We'll write employees.append of Matt. And now if we print employees, we can see that Matt is added. Instead of just a new item, we can also append an entire list to our existing list. We can achieve the same using another method called extent. So let's make a new list called new employees and add Bob and Larry. Now if we print employees, we can see that Bob and Larry are also added to our employees list. The advantage of extend is that we will be able to extend the current list with any iterable like a tuple or set. For example, let's call extend with a new tuple with values Barry and Alan. And we can see that these are added to our employees list. Also, it is possible to simply use the plus operator between two lists to achieve this result. Next is the copy method. Copy method returns a new copy of a list. As expected, the changes made to the copied list does not change the original list. So let's make a copy dupe employees equals employees.copy. And let's print both dupe employees and employees and we can see that they are the exact same. Now let's introduce another method called clear, which removes all the elements in the list. We'll call that on the dupe employees list. And now we can see that the employees list is still intact, while the dupe employees doesn't contain any elements. Next is the insert method, which can be used to add a new item at some index on the list. Insert method takes in two parameters. First is the index where we'll be adding the new item. And the second parameter is the new item itself. So let's add Allen at first position by employees.insert of zero Allen. And we can see the value has updated. Next is the pop method, which takes in an index and removes the value in that index of a Python list and returns the removed value. Let's say we want to remove David, who is currently in the first index. Let's call print pop value equals employees.pop of one. And we can see that David is gone and pop method also return the value David. There's another method called remove, which takes an item as parameter calling remove on the list with an item will remove the first occurrence of that item from the list. Let's consider this employees list again. There are multiple occurrences of David. Let's call employees dot remove of David and print employees. And we can see that the first occurrence of David is removed from the employees list. Next is the reverse method, which basically reverses the order of our Python list. Consider this course list again. Let's call reverse and now print again. And we can see that the entire order is now reversed. 
Next is the sort method. If we have a list of primitive types, like in the examples we have seen so far, sort method will sort the list directly. For example, consider this scores list. Let's call sort method and print and we have the items in the list sorted. By default sorting is in ascending order. If we needed the sorting in descending order, we can add a parameter reverse equals true. But sometimes when you're working with real life applications, you have to deal with list of objects instead of primitive types. For example, you might be having a list of student objects, which each student object having attributes name, ID, marks. We need to use Python to sort these students based on their marks. To do that, the sort method has an attribute called key, which takes in a Python function. This function has an input of single student object and returns the expected sorting criteria. In this case, we'll just return student.marks. Now the student's list has been sorted based on their marks. Finally, we need to look at list comprehensions. List comprehensions provide a syntax to create new list based off of the values from an existing list. To create a new list based on list comprehension, you need to follow this particular syntax. New list equals expression for item in iterable if conditional. Let's consider an existing list scores. Now suppose we want to make a list of scores that are higher than 45. Using list comprehension, we can simply write winning scores equals inside square brackets, score for score and scores if score greater than 45. Alternatively, we can achieve the same using the below logic. In comparison, list comprehension leads to more concise code. That's it for today. Let me know if you enjoyed this video and if you found this helpful, please make sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching. See you soon.